overlap, Chala, Nolo, that's stunning! Eh, ci stanno mettendo la frusta, ragazzi, ecco Cialanoglu, il tiro di Cialanoglu, il gol! Just his first touch, his movements, how clever the space he finds, yeah, in the little small clever pockets. Mm. He's just, he's a one-off yeah. for me, and it was just he great did. to be in the same stadium. Cialanoglu, oh, what a brilliant goal from Hakan Cialanoglu! Hakan Cialanoglu is one of the most influential footballers in Serie A this season, and he is the hidden gem behind Inter Milan's Scudetto push this season. His well-mixed skills of precise free kicks and exceptional passing range make him the perfect defensive midfielder, despite being an attacker at heart. From a troubled childhood and a quick rise to fame in Germany to now being one of the best registas in the world, Hakan Chanoglu can even be compared to the great Andrea Perlo, and in this video I will cover it all. So let's start from the top. Hakan Chanoglu was born on the 30th of February 1994 in Mannheim, Germany, to Turkish parents who had immigrated there. Mannheim, Germany was the average small town dominated by the middle class. But Chanoglu grew up quite poor, and often his family faced financial challenges. For the majority of his childhood, he grew up playing football on the streets with the other kids almost every day until sunset. Chanoglu took his passion for football to the local academy, Wildhof Mannheim, where for eight years he continued to impress his trainers and coaches. His excellent set piece taking and advanced passing range for his age made him the perfect midfielder for almost any team. That's when Chanoglu got his big break, signing for Karlsruher SC under 19s. Very quickly, he established himself as too experienced for the under 19s, scoring two goals and two assists that season. Which does not seem like a lot, but Chanoglu was insane for his age back then. He was one of the best set piece and free kick takers in Germany, and was often referred to as the next Mesut Urzil. His coaches and trainers noticed this and gave him the chance to start making a few appearances for the first team in the two Bundesliga. He made 14 appearances in the first season. Even though he didn't score or assist, he did exhibit a wide sense for the game as one of the most versatile players you'll see and shown that he had the talent to be an elite passer and set piece specialist. And he would go on to secure himself an even more important role in the 2012-13 campaign where he would begin to gain some traction in football. Karls Ruhr was relegated to the third division at the end of the 2011-12 season, which saw Hakan Chanoglu sign a four-year deal with Hamburg in the Bundesliga for 2.5 million euros. But since Hakan was just 18 years old, he was loaned back to Karlsruhe for the end of the season. And thank God he got that loan, because Hakan Chanoglu would absolutely ball out in the 2012-13 season, being one of the most electric players in the third division and immediately sticking out of place. But for the right reasons, it was also this campaign that Hakan showed how extremely versatile he was as a midfielder, attacking mid, center mid, and even defensive mid. The guy could play almost anywhere, but he prospered most in the wide positions. By the end of the year, he had a total of 17 goals and 14 assists, which as a midfielder should show what kind of level Chalonoglu was on this season. And the hype began to build around him going in for the first season with Hamburg. His spell at Hamburg, though brief, was arguably the most meaningful of his whole career. He would finally get to show his elite talent on the big stage in the first division, and at the ripe age of 19, he was the first string midfielder. He made his first start in the season opener on August 11th, and got his first goals at the end of the month, scoring a brace against Eintracht Braschweig, and netting this absolute banger of a free kick. <laughs> Throughout the season, Chal Onoglu was an indispensable piece for Hamburg, not only because of his role in the team as a general playmaker, but his expertise in set pieces, and the world really took notice of his skills with the free kick against Dortmund. Just have a look at this. From 41 yards out, he banged this in, and that's when the whole football world started to learn his name. Ending the 2013-14 season with 11 goals and 5 assists at the end of the year, it was clear that Chalonoglu wasn't just a one-trick pony. He had the potential to become one of the best midfield maestros in the world. This obviously caught the eye of Mr. Roger Smith, manager of Bayer Leverkusen at the time, and he decided to give Hakan a chance and sign him for 15 million euros. And very quickly, his image began to grow even more. He immediately hit the pitch with Leverkusen, making his debut in the UCL qualifiers in June, scoring his first goal at the club at the end of August against Copenhagen in the UCL qualifiers. The rest of Hakan Chaglu's first year at Bayer Leverkusen can be outlined as a period of dynamic growth and exceptional set-piece mastery. His adaptability and technical skill made him a vital component of Leverkusen's young and vibrant team. Chaglu's free kick prowess became a hallmark of his playstyle. He was known for his ability to curve the ball over a wall with precision a technique he learned by studying free kick specialists like David Beckham and Janino. His free kicks alone were a threat contributing significantly to the team's success. Statistically, Chaonoglu made a substantial impact for Leverkusen in the 2014-15 season, scoring 13 and assisting 11, showing that he could provide the goals and assists while playing that key midfield role in Leverkusen's build-up. Quality performances throughout the season was recognized with a nomination for the Golden Boy Award in 2014, and his role in the team became even more important in the following two years, where Chalanoglu not only became a Bundesliga legend, but a global superstar in the world of football. 2015-16 and 2016-17 were both very important years for Chalanoglu. Not only did Hakan continue to perform for Bayer Leverkusen domestically, he persisted in his rise in European competition. His campaign started with a brace and an assist against Bate Borisov, but he really shone bright when Leverkusen faced Barcelona and AS Roma in the group stage. 
match. Even though Leverkusen didn't beat either of those teams, Chalo Onoglu had an exceptional performance over those four matches, assisting three goals and overall playing a huge part in Leverkusen even competing in the first place. As the season went on, he continued to score quality free kicks and boss the midfield in the Bundesliga. He ended the year with a total of 8 goals and 11 assists in all competitions, and this amazing form continued into the next year of 2016-17, where he had a bit of a slow start when it came to the score sheet, but ultimately still playing as one of the best midfield talents in the Bundesliga. He started to get into a groove and was scoring bangers every other game. Up until the new year, he had scored a total of 7 goals and assisted 7, on track to surpass his numbers from the previous years. But suddenly, he was banned from football for 4 months. Why? Well, because of a breach in his contract relating to his time at Carlos Reser SC, where he was supposed to transfer to Trabzonspor in 2011 after agreeing to sign with the club, but Chalhanoglu later extended his contract with Carlos Reser. The issue? Trabzonspor spent Chalhanoglu 100,000 euros as a signing bonus. Initially, they sought repayment of the 100,000 euros, but Chalhanoglu decided to keep it, which resulted in him getting banned and fined for the 100k. This obviously sparked a lot of controversy and issues between him and the club, so AC Milan became very interested in signing him, since an exit was looming. And that's what they do, the 23 year old Turkish midfielder signed to AC Milan for just 20 million euros. A month after signing he made his debut on August 20th, 2017 in the Europa League qualifiers and very quickly he became the best playmaker and set piece specialist at the club. His ability to control the tempo of the match and ultimately be the main factor of Milan winning games made him one of the best midfielders in the world at the time. His significant contribution in the sense of build up and possession became a hallmark of AC Milan's play and he was also a decent goal scorer as well, averaging almost 7 goals and 12 assists per season, scoring banger after banger with free kicks and other long shot goals. I swear this guy never scored an ugly goal in his life. And in the four years he would spend in Milan, he became a fan favorite. But one area where he was significantly lacking was his versatility. You see, back at his other clubs, he was able to play multiple different roles throughout the season, which was always a big factor in him getting signed. But at Milan, he really struggled in that deep midfield role, as well as in the final third when playing out wide, which was an area they were lacking in with injuries and other absences at the time. In his last year, 2020-21, kind of tapered off with his form and overall performances. As he was consistently struggling with acute injuries throughout the season, it made it difficult for him to get into a solid run of form. To be completely blunt, he was pretty bad in other competitions, only playing full 90s twice over Europa League and the other cup competitions. And in Serie A, he struggled to provide a consistent output of goal contributions. And after negotiations went on with the club about a new contract, they didn't come to an agreement and Inter Milan, the city's rival, signed him for free. Probably one of the best transfer moves of that transfer window. Immediately the decision to sign him paid off as in his debut, he scored a goal and assisted one against Genoa. A man of the match performance that showed how good of a player Hakan Shinoglu really is. He went on to score 7 goals and notch 12 assists in the league in the 2021-22 season and scored in the Coppa Italia final victory against Juventus that year, which instantly made him liked among the fans. He had a great first season getting 2 player of the month awards and things would only get better next term. He continued to shell out consistent man of the match performances and he started to establish himself as one of the best midfielders in Serie A in 2023. He ended up equaling the record for the most goals scored by a Turkish player in Serie A, which is wild when you consider the role he was playing in the latter half of the season. When Brozovic, Inter Milan's main defensive midfielder, picked up an injury around January, Inzagni had to make the choice to put Chol Onoglu in that deep midfield role that he was struggling with back at AC Milan. But to the surprise of almost everybody, he excelled in this role. He wouldn't provide many goals or assists, but he did make a huge difference in the quality of play at Inter Milan. It was strange that he was able to be a quality regista at Inter, but AC Milan he struggled immensely. For the rest of the season, Chal Onoglu was probably the most quality DM in Serie A. Despite his preferred role being an attacking mid, he led Inter through an incredible Champions League campaign, leading them all the way to the final and when they played City, he was moved from DM to center mid, and then they lost. I don't know if that's a coincidence or not, but by the end of the season he had one of the highest shot creating actions and an 87% pass completion rate. It was clear that this was where he was meant to be. And when Brozovic would end up leaving Inter in the summer transfer to Al Nasser, Inter were expected to sign another defensive mid, but instead they decided to keep Chahanoglu in this DM role, and he would absolutely tear up Serie A in 2023-24. To start the season, he went absolutely insane. He had man of the match performances in both games of the Supercoppa. A major change in his play though was the fact that he's the highest goal scoring defensive midfielder in the Serie A this season. With 11 goals in low competitions, he is Inter Milan's second top scorer behind Lautaro Marnez. Overall, Hakan Chinoglu has been a standout performer for Inter Milan in the 2023-24 season. Beyond scoring, he has also provided 3 assists in Serie A, showing his significant influence in creating chances for his teammates. And in the Champions League, despite playing fewer minutes, Chinoglu made his presence felt with a crucial goal, contributing to Inter's strong performance in the competition. Despite them getting knocked out by Atletico Madrid just a couple weeks ago, fans have recognized Chinoglu's contributions 
with many appreciating his improved performances and consistency compared to his time at AC Milan. His ability to dictate play from a deeper position has earned him praise and has been crucial for Inter's success. This season, Shaw Anoglu has been instrumental in Inter's pursuit of their first Gudetto in three years. And he's been so good in fact that he can be compared to Andre Perlo. While Perlo's rise to glory isn't very comparable to that of Shaw Anoglu, their playstyle and growth into a deeper playmaker role is almost synonymous. Perlo is almost celebrated as the quintessential deep line playmaker or regista. His playstyle was characterized by a sense of calm and almost effortless control of the game's tempo. Perlo's vision allowed him to execute long range passes that could penetrate almost any defense and his technique on the ball was so good that he made the complex look simple. His free kick ability was also legendary capable of bending the ball with finesse and precision against any keeper. Perlo's role was less about covering every blade of grass and more about being in the right place at the right time to orchestrate play. Chalonoglu's play is almost identical when described in this sense. Let's talk about where Perlo was in his 30s, the same age as Chanoglu. When Perlo was 30, he was a lot less successful on the score sheet, only scoring two goals and assisting three all season. Back then, defensive midfielders were far less known for their goal contributions. Perlo was an integral piece of the AC Milan team he was playing in and a world-class midfielder. There was literally no one better than him. Shell Onoglu has caught up well to his comparisons, so let me know. Do you think Shell Onoglu will follow the same glory as his Italian counterpart? Comment your answer, and as always, make sure to subscribe. The next video is over here, and I'll see you guys next week.